if we go for discussing about the comments, you can say easily the comments are like of two different types. One is a single line comment and the second one is the multi-line comments, right? So those are being the facts you, you want to know, right? So we can say it has a single line. Um, the same thing will say it has the multi-line, okay? Now, see, now after the comments and the keywords, there comes as the modules like uh, the, you can say the math modules and all where you go for finding of the square roots, you can go for finding of the exponentiation values and all, right? If I say square root of 5, square root of 3, square root of 24, what you do is basically you go for importing the math module and then you find the square root over there from there, right? So, square root of 5, square root of 4, square root of uh, 36, some values over there like this right so things can be taken right now um, in this uh, integer float complex and all there comes a topic called this type casting right so you know like uh, two different kind of type casting are there when you say you know the type casting that we see is what we talk about is of the two types right and those are at one it call is explicit type casting okay and the other one is called as the implicit type casting, right? So in case of ITC, what we do is here, like let's say implicit is something like which changes automatically, right? You don't go for finding of the uh, like changing of the methods and all, right? If I say I am adding two plus three point seven eight seven, so obviously I'm going to get results in the float as per the precedence. Right. Same thing if I say 4.57 plus a complex number. Obviously, the things will be 4.57 plus 45. Say. Right. Things will be like this. Right. So that is according to the precedence, you'll be getting the values. Okay. Right, that's fine. Now, see. So these are the implicit type casting where the type automatically change, right? So you are adding one integer, one float, you are getting the complete combination of the float numbers. That is an implicit type. Now, if I uh, say that 2 plus 3.47 giving me the result of 5 point something like this. If I say that I want the result in integer, I'll say something like this, integer. Obviously, I get the results over there, right? So that is an integer type and that is basically what we have forced to be become the results right because uh, apart from this there was something else right the results were something else right okay that is fine right moving next these are the type basically now in every com complex number like if say it's, there is a minus 34 plus uh, something 67 j or something kind of like, like that so we can say easily that if this is a complex number it is having obviously a real part and that is minus 34.0 and obviously it will again have a imaginary part which we cut say and that's like this like this minus 34.0 and 33.0 right so we would like to consider this as the brackets and the results also like this okay that would be giving you the exact results if it put the parenthesis over there. That's it. Okay. Things are clear. Next. All right. Now we have some kind of operatives and some of the printing methods which we will be discussing now. Right. If we want to print something, how we are going to write it through overall. Let's see. So first have a look on the uh, printing options, okay, then we'll go to the operators and all, okay. Now let's say that we have uh, some variables kind of like s is equals to 45, let's say, okay. Now if we want to print the value of s, that's it. Or if I say the cost of two books is something as 150 or something like that, right. So how do I make it there? I'll say that print. cost of two books are if I say 150 is 150 easy right same thing I can say 
Just wait a minute. What are the printing options I am making right there? The cost of two books are converting into string and then 150. The outputs we want should be similar. using the format machines. So I hope you all know these methods, but just we are revising the things, right? See, the result still has the same. What else method you can use? In different method, what we can use it. If anyone knows any different method, what we can use. If we're printing the same thing, the cost of two books are one fifty. Okay, fine. So there can be methods, right? So I'll say. All right. So there can be a several ways to print any same line. A lot of things are there to discuss, right? Percent D, percent F, percent S, percent C, and a lot of things. Percent B, percent V, and all. Okay. And the format methods are the of the string methods, and then you see the str having why I have added pluses. Like whenever we add plus, we say it has a string concatenation, right? You know, right? So string concatenation goes only with the same data types and so we are converting 150 in the string. The same we say the two books cost as 150 over there. So that's a very simple type. Now let's discuss the operators. Now operators, the very first we have arithmetic operators. If I say it as like something plus minus, right? So 2 plus 3, 4 minus 5, 6 multiplied by 7, 7 divided by 8, 8 divided divide by 9, 2 to the power of four, uh, 3, and 100 yeah cool then divided by 3 giving the remainder that's it so all the results are there 2 plus 3 5 4 minus 5 minus 1 6 multiplied 7 42 7 divided by 8 is 0 0.785 0 0.875 uh, 8 divided divided by 9 leaves the remainder at 0 okay and 2 to the power of 3 gives the remainder uh, sorry result as 8 and 10 when divided by 3 leaves the remainder as 1 okay right these are basic arithmetic operators now we have assignment operators like if I say x equals 5 here I cannot assign all the things here in once right I'll say it as x plus equals 5 that means x would be definitely having a result print x stand right the same things if I copy I'm going to paste it over minus now x value is equals to 10 okay so we only need to do the things so 10 minus 5 is now 5 
Now 5 multiplied by 5 becomes 25, right? So these are the things. Again, it becomes 5. So a lot of operators are there as such for the uh, arithmetic operators, including the equals to sign giving you the assignment operator side. Right? So similarly, we have something called as comparison operators. Let's see. Here you basically if I say 4 is greater than 5, 1 is less than 3, 3 is equal equals to 5, 5 is not equals to 7, so 3 is greater than equals to 6 or 7, 8 is less than equals to 5, make results would be there true or false something like right? You can say 1 is greater than. So basically all the false and true results are nothing but the 1 and 0. If I say, so the next operator what we are going to look is here as the boolean operators, right? Or you can say on to the logical operators. Okay. You can say 1 and 1. True and true. 1 and 0. True and false. 0 and 1. False and false. False and true. And then false and false results giving you one zero 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 that is only when the conditions are true both the conditions are true you are going to get true right the facts are things okay now we say this as uh, like interchanging the things we can say one and uh, one sorry one that is always one or r one or one one or zero zero or one zero and zero right so only when both the conditions are false you are going to get a result that is a false one otherwise you can use the keywords too and or like that and then we have negations not of one it's going to be false this one can use bitwise star yeah mirror that is a bit which from giving the results oh you can use not basically that is fine not of true false and not a false true okay now if you say not of not of one not of true is equals to false and not of false is equals to true here to everyone these are the facts right easy operators discussing the things right so i hope things are clear to you here too right next we have something called as if and else where we need to check up to the things and have a number, lot of numbers over there right in between there comes something called as random numbers. In between that. So random numbers. These are the numbers. What do you know like uh, giving you the sum. Uh, having a ranges and then you get numbers from there. Like from the left hand side to right hand side. You get a negative of the less one right. That is if I see a range of 1 to 10 right so you'll be having a numbers from 1 to 9 that is the last one minus 1 basically always right if I say a range of numbers from 3 to 15 so obviously there is no such doubt that you will be getting the results written as range of 3 to 15 but the answers would be from 3 to 14 12 well, right the same would be using as here as range, we'll be importing the random module. And let's say if you are if you are using random integer or random range or random uh, choices, anything like right? so, I'll say random dot integer, uh, random range, random integer. Okay, that is fine. Uh, let's see the range first of all. When you are using the range function, if I say I want numbers from twelve to fifteen, from two to fifteen. So obviously, 
if we run this, we'll be getting a numbers between only from 2 to 15. See, 2, 3, 8, 3. Any random value you'll be getting it. Okay. Now, if I increase it 12 to 15, 14, 13, 13, 14, 14, 12, 14. Right, so now there are only chances of getting numbers as 12, 13 and 14. No 15 would be coming, right? So only one value would be coming every time. And if you say it, you do it as 14 and 15. Now throughout the time you run this, you'll never get 15 any time. If I say, let's have a program, look at the program, okay? If I look onto my L and find it completely 14, no values. Why? Because the numbers are going to start from 14 and obviously it is going to end at 14 because I'm using range and range would be always having numbers at minus one. Clear to everyone having any doubts? Four of you, Sara, Virgi, Archana, in front of anyone having doubts? Okay, so you can find this, right? Now, as soon as I increase the ranges, if I say from 15 to 15, so empty range for random, right? Because it is not even starting and not even completing. If I say minus 15, from minus 15 to 15, then you'll get a lot of things, right? Now you'll be getting a ranges, a lot of values, a minus one, 195 to 15 now there is a very less chance that the number will be repeating if i say l dot sort see uh, there are very less chance for e number to be repeated 6 is being repeated 88 is being repeated uh, any more one more two numbers would be repeating but there are very less chances here too i find the things right so these are being done right in the random numbers now there is a very simple fact that uh, something is being generated as a google quotes even what we will be discussing in the data science in the pandas uh, in the numpy right that is like if i say g slash plus random dot random top let's say one to six comma something like this one two three four five six okay and converting this in the or let's say giving a comma If I use it like this, print g slash and then the results are something like this. Okay, if you one time Google verification, print. if I run this, I'm getting something like this. That is g384589 is a one time Google verification code OTP. If I again run this, a new code is being generated. If I again run this, a new code is being generated. Again, a new code, right? So there are facts. Things could be there. Okay. 
the same is being generated as for the Facebook, Instagram, and all. All the OTPs, what you find there, are being done in the app, right? So basically, these are not present. So this is your Facebook password reset code, kind of. What do you see in your mobile phone, right? Okay, next. Just a moment. So these are the for the random numbers right so till here no doubts you would be having right i hope next we come up to the conditions and the statements condition statements okay here you have three kind of things like if and else now if you want to check the like let's say have a situation that uh, you are uploading your file to your like college area right or portal you are uploading you have been asked to upload your resume to your college okay in the college portal you are asked to uh, upload your resume over there right so let's say the college is accepting the formats the college is accepting is so formats are the docx txt PDF, sometimes students said in like in the web page, so dot HTML, okay, so not dot HTML, htm okay, or XPS, all right, I'll remove this. So let's say these are the formats what the college is be accepting for the resume okay right now the student will be uploading something right so let's say the student file be the input enter the file name right file name will be uh, entered here and then will be printing to the user that we are processing student file see how it is being there like let's say I'm uh, uploading something just a minute someone is calling So let's say if the file name is something I'm writing my one. Uh, PDF. I'm writing like this. Okay. And I giving enter. So I see my one.
right? And thing. I think Wi-Fi is not working. Students are here. You lost it. Trying to connect quickly. You can see the screen now. Uh, there was a power cut here. Okay. So I think it is okay now. Right. Okay, so we were right. Uh, if I say that I'm writing something, my file, and then processing this file name. Okay. So what we do is just we'll be using the file, okay, not the extensions. Or you can say the some last letters like this. If I say I'm uploading my resume or something PDF, so obviously it is giving resume dot like telephone. Okay, if I'm using the format of PDF, so obviously it is processing this right now. After this, what you can say is you will be checking that if okay, now if the stu file dot splitting using. The dots using the dots so if we are splitting it using the dots and if this after the split of the minus one that is a negative indexing or you can say the last one right so if the last one is there inside the formats what we have taken then we can say easily that file uploaded successfully okay or else if it is not processed right if it is not splitted then we can say print extension error and then you can write Is not a extension valid extension. So if I say now that it is something like if I'm uploading a let's say Gramin res Gramin is right dot the CSV format, then it is processing Gramin is and it says the extension error that is V is not a valid statement. Okay. Uh, sorry, we have to use this too. You see, CSV is not a valid extension, right? We can use if and else in such directions, right? And having searching, sortings, um, understanding the conditions, right? In those cases we can use this, right? So you can see that CSE is not a valid extensions. Now, what can be the valid extensions? 
So we can easily run this if we see it's just again the cram is dot so gram is dot the uh, docx so it is processing graminus and it says graminus uploaded successfully that's it okay right so things are like when you upload your pictures over there in the google drive or in some different formats which are not suitable right so you you get some kind of error something like this or otherwise you see something over there as processing right so formats are being different just like okay and the rest of the things are being same now uh, let's say that if you look on to the uh, different kind of things like if you are uploading your emails and all there what happens you basically like let's say if my email is itd.chip now over there and gmail this is my email id okay so i mean i want to check my which domain i'm using so i can use it right spread with at the rate and get me the negative so i'm using gmail.com so basically what the domain i'm using is gmail okay right now which what is my user id for to see i'm using zero that is itd dot is my user id of the gmail okay so that is how we're going to check throughout the things okay right moving next so in these cases you can use if and else and all these things right uh, so let's see like uh, in the strings work method you have let's have a rev revisions over there if in a string like if i'm writing string or strong i want to set s as capital i can use the title method even or i can use the capitalized method even I can use both the methods right and if I want to capitalize everything I can use uppercase and I can get uh, everything over there I want to do the lower cases so I'll using strong dot lower find all the things in the lower right obviously it is in the strong right in the lower cases so let's make it something in the uh, different kind of cases right so I'll get the things in the lower case right now if you have something like when you want to completely do a comparison so you'll be using something factors called as case fold if i say there is a comparison so for the comparisons we use the function of case fold like if you have i capital om capital comparisons would be having no affections right so things would be still the same whatever we are looking on okay right okay. next so again like we have keywords let's say we have functions or we say that CSV is a very small format for handling big files. Right? So if I want that every of my words should become as a capital one, what I'm going to use is just dot capitalize, sorry, dot the title. See, every first letter will be in the capital cases. If I want only the first letter in the capital, I'll be using capitalize. Only the first one. Now if I want to replace the CSV with something, I would be using a different function, obviously. So let's say I will use the replace function. I want to replace the CSV with CSV. Here on this, and I see the facts. CSV is a very small format for handling big Excel files. 
okay if i want to look on it how many s are there so i'll find there are four s now what is the first you can say like what is the index number of the first s Okay, and you can just find one. Okay, all right. So there are a lot of methods for the string guys you can go for the formats you can go for any of the methods if you have any doubts in the of the method for the string you can ask until now whatever we have discussed if you have any doubts so tomorrow we'll be going up with the different data types like less tuples and uh, the sets and the dictionaries and we'll end the things of, of the python right and then we'll be going up with the different facts like with the starting up with the simp and then going with the, the libraries and all okay that will be a different part right so uh, today we'll be having till this right so 